cops. What's the most BS-sounding excuse you got that actually turned out to be true? Former park ranger. First week in the job, we pull up and see a couple of kids smoking in their car with the windows down. The city has an ordinance against smoking on park property, but it is too petty to give them a ticket. We approach the car and they are visibly nervous. FTO looks through the windows and sees a couple of beer cans in the car. Bingo. We get them out and start running their info. They're all underage, but old enough to smoke cigarettes. FTO asks them where the beer came from. The driver says he recycles. FTO laughs and begins to search the car. I'm finishing up running their info and these guys are being really respectful. FTO finishes searching the car and goes to open the trunk. All of a sudden, I hear him burst out laughing. He's laughing so hard he can barely breathe. He waves me over to look at the trunk of the car and it is level with crushed cans and bottles. FDO said that he has heard that excuse for 20 years and this is the first time it was true. He walked up, uncuffed the driver, and let him go. FDO, field training officer. New officers are assigned a training officer out of the academy. The length of time they are assigned to an FDO varies by department. Handcuffed? In California and the U.S. in general, cuff rights are very loose. The general rule of thumb is we can cuff you for officer safety if you have probable cause or PC for a crime. In this situation, smoking in the park was all of the PC we need. Beer and car, open container laws vary from state to state. California has some of the stricter laws where you can get a DUI if the keys are in the car and you're drinking. I've heard that you can get a DUI as a passenger, but I would have to look that up. Park ranger, the title of park ranger is very general. There are interpretive rangers, who are there as historians, naturalists, and for park information. There are firefighter park rangers, who get through full fire academies and drive fire trucks or brush trucks, pick up truck with a fire hose and water tank. There are safety officers, who are essentially security officers that have the power to issue parking tickets. They will often be assigned to police officer rangers for force multiplication. When tagged onto a police officer ranger, they can perform most duties that a police officer can while under their direction. And there are police officers. They either go through their department's own police academy or get added into the other department's police academy. Our department, City of Los Angeles, used LAPD and LA Sheriff's Academies. Some departments allow the police officer rangers to carry firearms, some do not. I was not a police officer. I was an emergency hire park ranger, EHPR at the time. The city had a severe shortage of officers and a huge homelessness problem in the parks. The city of Los Angeles voted to grant a handful of emergency positions to the department. As an EHPR, we went through security guard training, 837 power to arrest training, LAPD's dispatch school to get certified to use the CA's criminal databases, wildland fire school, lower high angle search and rescue school, and emergency medical technical, EMT, school. The appointment lasted one year, or as long as it took to go through full police backgrounds and get into a police academy. I worked as a safety officer for a few years and as an emergency hire for 11 months. I cleared backgrounds but decided to move to the private sector a week before the academy. This was a personal decision, but influenced by the tension against law enforcement in 2015 to 2016, and the fact that our department did not arm police officer rangers but demanded full police officer duties. I have tremendous respect for police officers, and especially for the police officer rangers that are unarmed performing police duties. There's dudes of that clank. Don't quote me on the legal stuff. It is likely I am wrong. Unethical life pro tip. Keep crushed cans and bottles in your trunk when you drive so that you can make an excuse that you recycle. Story 2. Popped a college kid for crappy driving and pulled 100 grams of grass off of him. Also a one pound glass pipe shaped like a huge nail. No biggie. Also find grass under the other college kids in the car. Driver falls on the sword and tells me all of it is his and lets his friend walk free. I like this kid. However, during the search, we find packed Addies in the cellophane of a cigarette pack with the top melted closed. God damn it intensifies. Ask it if he's dealing <laughs> at school. Tell him I'm aware of the prescription pill epidemic. He says no and spins a huge yarn about how he only carries a few on him because he's had his orange pill bottles stolen so many times. Kid seems like a pretty good dude. I decided to take the X-Files approach. Supervisor tells me to pursue charges for dealing, blah, blah, blah. I tell the kid he has one chance to prove he's telling the truth. Shows me the broken glass under his driver's seat from vehicle burglary. Gotta do better. I follow behind him back to his dorm. He lets me in and shows me the busted footlocker he kept him in under his bed. Then no, kinda weak. Supervisors tell me to hurry and drop the axe. Tell him to do better. He calls one of the soccer team assistants up and we meet him in the locker room. Shows me the little wooden locker which is a broken lock. Assistant coach tells me they have replaced the lock on his cabinet three times. Campus security has numerous reports of medicine theft from this kid. Nice. I call the supervisor up and tell him I have no grounds to pursue delivery charges. Poor bastard just kept getting his ass jacked and being the big dumb meatball he was. He started packaging them like that. I ended up talking to his best friend after breaking up a house party a couple months later. Friend tells me the kid is a stand-up guy who only uses grass due to extreme anxiety. Totally believable from my interaction with him and has never sold anything in his life. Friend thanked me and told me his buddy spoke well of me. Friend also tells me he had to drive his buddy to the hospital a few hours after I left from a panic attack due to the whole incident. 
Story 3. Not a cop, but I did get stopped by one for eating a taco. I worked at a community college in LA that had a high school right next to it. Well, there was a lot of stuff sold through the fence at the school, so there were always cops driving up and down the street between the schools. Couldn't get a parking pass since I just worked at the school, so I always parked in that street. Hit up Taco Bell for lunch and was sitting in my car eating my double-decker tacos when a cop drove past. Next thing I know, he's flipping a U-turn and heading right for me. He slides to a stop, driver window to driver window, and yells at, What the hell do you think you're doing? Stunned, I just said, Eating my lunch? Well, he isn't buying it and says I'm hiding something. I just held up my taco and looked so confused. He burst out laughing and peeled out. Saw him a few times after that, and he always waved and had the biggest grin on his face. Story 4. Former U.S. Coast Guard, and actually did law enforcement. For those unfamiliar, the Carolinas and the states, and especially Wrightsville Beach, Myrtle Beach, New Topsail, Lockwood's Foley along the NCSC border are overflowing with hammered and or stupid boaters during the summers. Especially with UNCW nearby, buzzed college kids in the water everywhere doing reckless crap. BWIs, illegal charters, messing around outside of the channel, cutting bows, speeding, ignoring no-wake zones, and even the odd charges. Suffice it to say, combined with hurricane season, we were quite busy from May to September. One Friday afternoon, our OOD gets a call out in Channel 16, like 911 for boaters, from a captain calling in a pontoon boat that has flipped and, around 20 young, intoxicated males in the water. We arrived on scene with another 47 from a nearby station and are fishing these buzzed idiots from the water. They packed 24 people on board a 14-person pontoon boat, and of course, it flipped. As we were pulling them out, literally all of them were drunkenly threatening us with their daddy's law firm. It was like a crappy 90s teen MTV rom-com come to life. We just rolled our eyes, zip-tied them, didn't pack enough cuffs, and 90% of them were combative or hammered, even seeing the pistols on our hips or rifles or shotgun slings. Turns out it was an entire frat of future lawyers studying at Elon whose fathers are all lawyers as well. Still didn't save them from the local U.S. attorney and reckless operation of a boat, BWI, unlicensed captain, etc. charges. Still was surreal with dozens of hammered 20-year-old dudes wailing and telling us their daddy would sue us. Don't even get me started on jet skier stories. Story 5. I was driving with my fiancé and we went through a roadblock where they checked registration and stuff. And we got to the cops and they asked for our registration. I'm sitting in the passenger seat, so I open up the glove box, and right there is a clear, unmarked baggie filled to the brim with catnip. I completely forgot I was there and just froze. Wide-eyed, I turn to look at the cop shining his light through my open window, and he's frozen too, just staring at the baggie with this look on his face like, Really? I just started immediately professing, Oh my god, I swear to god this is catnip. You can take it and smell it or test it or whatever, like I swear. And at this point, it's just so ridiculous that I start cracking up, and the cop takes it and reasonably deduces I'm telling the truth, and he starts laughing and calls his partner over and tells her what happened, and they both just cackled away for a minute and sent us on our way. Cat grass. Good thing there weren't claw enforcement. Story 6. Okay, one night I'm out working, and as I go down the street, fairly nice middle-class area surrounded by some high-crime neighborhoods, around midnight I see a dude on a bike, no lights on, pulling a lawnmower behind him on a rope, I immediately flip a 180 and light him up. Recognize the guy as a local homeless dude with some prior burglary or theft arrests. I walk up and just open with, Dude, come on. Guy holds his hands out and swears he didn't steal the lawnmower. Claims someone just gave it to him. I ask who and he doesn't know a name, so I demand he tell me where to find said lawnmower owner. The directions he gave were literally, Go that way, then go right at the stop sign and take one of those side streets that way. It's about halfway down a street, the house that has a pickup and a car in the driveway. By this point, backup had arrived, so I left him in the presence of backup and drove off in search of his mythical donor of lawn equipment. I made a decent guess as to the first turn, then flipped a mental coin as to which of the next three side streets he would have gone down. I picked the second of the three streets and start down it. Every other freaking house is a truck and car cone, though. There must have been a dozen houses that match the description. Halfway down, I see an average-looking house and go, eh, I'll try this one. After all, it's midnight and this is a wild goose chase. Go up, ring the doorbell, a middle-aged dude comes to the door. Hello, sir. Have you been giving away lawnmowers to random sketchy homeless guys at midnight today? Yes. As a matter of fact, he had. Homeowner goes on to complain to me that his wife was upset by his continual inability to get the mower running and had ordered him with some severity to remove the mower from the house or face the consequences. He pushed it to the curb right as a homeless guy rode by and the latter had asked and received his permission to take it. I drove back in shock and amazement. I apologized to the homeless guy and sent him on his way. A few months later, we ran into each other at a nearby gas station, and he told me it turned out just to need a new spark plug, and that he had gone it running again, before going off to sell it for $150 to someone. For years after, whenever I would run into him, he would always make sure to remind me of the money he made from selling that stolen lawnmower. Man, the odds of guessing the right street and house. 
And since you're already halfway through the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Story 7. This was my favorite story from a fourth grade teacher. Not a cop. She went to a cousin's wedding in mid-July. The cousin had overestimated how much champagne they would need at the reception and was giving away bottles to anyone who was interested. So my teacher took three and put them in the back seat of her car. Again, this was a hot summer day in July. After saying their goodbyes, my teacher, her husband, and her parents piled into the car and pulled out onto the highway, where two bottles burst open, spraying champagne everywhere and causing quite a ruckus. Of course, while this was happening, the car was swerving as the driver was also getting bathed in sparkling champagne. So it came as no surprise that as soon as they collected themselves, they saw the familiar flashing lights of a state trooper and pulled over. According to my teacher, the first thing the cop said was, I'm not going to ask if you've been drinking because I can smell it from here. My teacher tried explaining what had happened, but the cop wouldn't hear of it and ordered everyone out of the car. That's when the cop saw that everyone, both drivers and passengers, were dressed in their finery but soaked with champagne and looking quite shaken. A cursory search showed they opened bottles, but the cop still insisted on in a quick sobriety test just to make sure. Story 8. I was this person for some two lucky cops. So it's the holiday season a few years ago. I work at a coffee shop at the time and go to a coworker's New Year's ugly sweater party or some crap. Have a few drinks until 10 p.m., then switch to water. My one friend gets to talking to me about tea because we work with coffee and tea. Gives me a tea bag and a plastic baggie. I put it in my pocket. 2 a.m. rolls around and I leave, but I'm tired as hell. I wanted to get home and get to sleep, so I'm blasting music to keep me awake and probably going a little too fast, but not drastically so. Anyway, the party lights kick on behind me and I pull over. I go through the questions. Where are you coming from? Where are you going? Have you been drinking? Doing anything else? I blow clean in the breathalyzer. I work the line fine, balance on one leg. Then one of the cops pats me down and reaches my pocket. Him. Son, what do you have in your pocket? I know how ridiculous I'm about to sound. It's tea, officer. Him, about as dubious as you can expect. You expect me to believe you have tea in your pocket. Me. My friend gave it to me. At this point, his partner looks to be trying not to laugh at the absurdity of the situation. The cop in front of me looks over his shoulder at his partner in a, you believe this guy? Sort of way, then back to me. Him. Get it out. He holds out his hand while I fumble around and withdraw the plastic baggie from my pants pocket, complete with a single serving of tea neatly labeled, and handed to the suddenly bewildered officer. Him. Why the hell do you have tea in your pocket? He asks. Me. I like tea, officer. I respond in probably the most matter-of-fact way possible. How my partner finally gives up on restraining his laughter, the other cop gives me the tea back and tells me to go home and sleep. I never could bring myself to try that tea. I still have it in the same bag on my shelf. Story 9. Not a cop, but I once got pulled over by a fire truck. It was Orlando in August 1990. It was close to 100 outside. I worked for a computer rental company. We would rent computers to companies in town for trade shows or for a lot of other situations. The company van was a ragged-out Chrysler minivan with 180,000 miles on it. The AC didn't work, so the windows were down. I was coming back to the office in heavy rush hour traffic, and I found myself in a right turn only lane and couldn't get out in time, so I was forced to make the right turn. I hit the gas to speed up and get in front of people making a left turn into my same direction. I had to get all the way over to the left side to make a U-turn, so I cut off a fire truck to do it. One of the big squarish fire trucks with a flat front. I cut them off and go in the left turn lane to wait for the green arrow. I looked out the window to my left and saw a Dixie Chopper lawnmower mowing the grass on the side of the road maybe 15 feet from me. It was already hot. But this tremendous wave of heat came in through the driver's side window. I thought, man, that's a hot lawnmower. The light turned green and I started my U-turn. Halfway through it, this cloud of, I thought, steam came out of the hood and covered the windshield so I couldn't see. The power steering also failed. So I fought the car, trying to get back to the gas station at the corner so I could find a payphone. Yes, that's how old I am. But because I couldn't see, I missed the turn and ended up turning into an apartment complex. But this time, the cloud stopped and I could see again. Still no power steering, so I fought the car to do a U-turn so I could get back to the gas station. At this point, the fire truck I had cut off turned into the apartment complex. Full lights and blocked me in. Two huge firefighters got out of the truck holding fire extinguishers like beer cans. Excuse me, sir, did you know your van was on fire? Turns out while I was cutting them off, I'd been shooting flames out from under the passenger side of the van. They hit the lights, did a U-turn, and came back to me. The wave of heat wasn't from the lawnmower. They checked out the van and let me go. The cause turned out to be a damaged power steering line. It sprayed power steering fluid all over the exhaust manifold and caught fire. So yeah, I got cut off by a fire truck while on fire. Got pulled over by the fire truck. Story 10. Stopped a guy on a suspended registration and he started getting upset, but not at me. I ask him why he's so upset. He says it's the wife's car. She stopped making payments and it got suspended. On top of that, he was pissed because he was on the way to the new girlfriend and she was probably going to dump him if he no-showed her. I issued him a criminal ticket, thinking he was going to back off and leave the story. Instead, he goes... 
I totally get why you gave me a ticket, but I don't want this girl to dump me. She's a smoke. Can you give me a ride there? I say, fine, but you have to introduce me. Again, thinking he'd back off the story. He says, okay, deal, and away we go. We're sitting outside, and this girl refuses to come out, so he puts me on the phone. I tell her it's either she comes out and says hi, or I bring him to jail. Out she comes. 11 out of 10. Dude hit the freaking jackpot. He also pleaded guilty to the ticket. <laughs> I never told him to do that, but I got a kick out of it. I like to think it was him giving me a wave back. Story 11. I'm a deputy. Cop, but we work the county or unincorporated areas. Me and a few sector partners, second smallest county in the state, fourth highest population, so we have a lot of deputies in a tiny area. We're hanging out at a gas station at about 3 a.m. to get some coffee and a snack. Outside, chit-chatting, waiting for the next call to come in. Guy pulls up in a pewter-colored Oldsmobile with a hubcap missing, hops out of the car and starts pumping gas. One of us noticed he had a gun holster on his right side but couldn't see a gun because his shirt was over it. Us being an open carry state, no big deal. However, the gun was concealed by the shirt, so we just stopped to talk to him. I explained to him that he can't conceal the gun. He said no problem, it was a mistake for him getting out of the car, understandable. Other partner looks in the passenger side of the car and there's a fist-sized saran wrap bag of white powder with multiple $20 bills underneath it sitting on the passenger seat right in plain view. Now to us, a gun, a large sized bag of white powder, with a good bit of money underneath, appears to be substance related. Start asking the guy like, yo, what is this crap and why is it just on your seat? He says, oh, it's powdered wall plaster. I just got it from my grandma. It's 3 a.m. at a gas station. I mean, come on, we're cops, so by all means we aren't the smartest people on the planet, but we ain't stupid. Or so we thought. Turns out the dude is 100% telling the truth. Gun was legal and legally obtained. His only history we could dig up was speeding tickets and a symbol of fray charges from years ago. Grandma gave him the plaster so he could fix a hole in his wall and he didn't have cash to buy it himself. So she spotted him some moolah. Needless to say, he's got a funny story to tell and I guess now I do too. It was super understanding and even himself said it was hilarious because it absolutely looked like pure ice and it looked like a huge amount. At least for lowly street deputies. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy. Undercover cops, what's the wildest thing you did just so you won't blow your cover? Story 3 was epic. See you in that video.